Hello everyone, I am Ranjit and uh, today we are going to learn how to create a custom workflow activity using C Sharp. As most of you are aware that workflows are really handy when we have to implement business processes and out of the, work, out of the box workflows help us to achieve most of our requirements. Still, in many cases if we need to implement multiple tasks together within a single transaction or some transaction which involves external applications and so on we may need to create our own custom activities let's create one and see how easy this is as a prerequisite we need crm sdk libraries handy this can be downloaded from microsoft free of cost if you don't have already then we need an editor which can be used to write our classes and convert it to an assembly something like visual studio let's start then to start with uh, open visual studio professional click on new project which will open up a pop-up where we can select a project type we will be selecting workflow type under which activity library give a meaningful name uh, to the activity library and uh, select the location where the files has to be saved click ok visual studio will create a new project for us along with some of the default files in it once the solution is created you can see some default files like activity.xaml which got created along with the project which really we don't need here so let's delete that now our solution is uh, ready uh, without any references or any default libraries but we need to add some references to make sure that we can um, work on the Microsoft CRM SDK stuff for that uh, we will uh, browse to the SDK bin folder and uh, select the two libraries SDK and SDK.workflow to our project so right now we have all the three libraries which are required that is SDK, SDK.workflow and system.activities now for writing our logic we will create a class file within this project give a meaningful name to it and click on add that will create a new class for us where we can start coding as the first step we have to refer the namespaces whatever we have added to the reference like system.activities Microsoft dot XRM dot SDK as well as XRM dot SDK dot workflow. Now all the namespaces are ready and the basic foundation is set for us. The next step is to inherit from the code activity class from the Windows workflow foundation let's keep our class public so that it can be accessible from external source now since we have inherited the code activity class we have to implement the execute method in the code activity as you know visual studio offers end license and it's easy for us to add that inside this method is what we our main logic is going to be before starting with that we need to add our own variables which will help us in writing more information like the tracing service workflow context i organization service all these are required to access the crm objects tracing service will help us in our debugging purpose whereas the workflow context will uh, help us to get all the information related to the context in which this workflow is getting executed so we will create an object for that so next step is to get the organization service proxy which can uh, do the actions like create delete update whatever we want for that first step, first step is to get the service factory once that is done we will create the organization service so for that i organization service uh, the name of the service variable 
from the service factory we will create the organization service inside this we need to grieve the user id under which this workflow has to execute here you can see the workflow context is something which helped us to get the user id below this we will implement our simple logic right now we are trying to create a new contact this is not a big deal maybe you can um, do this with out of the box also but for the time being let's let's create a new contact with some basic information so we'll create an entity first of type contact then uh, add the attributes first name and the last name to it so that some basic information which from which we can identify okay this is the contact which we created let's uh, give the contact name as uh, john oops uh, it should be contact not context so we'll change that first contact so now the first name is added to the contact entity and now we will add the last name let's let's put it as smith so the with some basic information our entity is ready the next step is to uh, create this entity record into the crm for that what we will do is we will call our i organization service and there we will get all the methods to be used so we'll use create and its input parameter would be of type entity this method will actually return a contacts id which got created so once the dlls are ready or the class file is ready next step is to uh, register the same to the CRM instance when we build it we can see two errors this is because the solution is not targeted to the correct dotnet framework for 2015 it should be targeting 4.5.2 that should be the version here you can see it is targeting framework 4.5.1 let's change it to 5.2 build the solution it will work all perfect right so there are no more bugs we will open the plugin registration tool before that let's confirm yeah in the debug mode we have the dlls got created perfect let's open the plugin registration tool now we will click we will register it by a new assembly over here for that let's navigate to the folder where the assembly was created from there we will point it to the correct assembly and once the assembly is selected over there you can you can see the classes belonging to the assembly is auto populated and it will be checked we can have multiple classes as well here it will be a sandbox because this is an online trial org there is an error why this is this is because there is no signing in our dll for registering anything to the crm we need a proper signing of the dll let's go back to the solution go to the properties signing add a signing assembly give a strong name to the file let's give some some meaningful name to it there's no need of any password so let's uncheck that box now we are ready with the dll and build it once again so that this strong key is included in the dll let's go to the registration tool again and once again we will register our new assembly select the dlls and click on register selected plugins that's it we have successfully registered our dll to the crm instance the next step would be to use this registered dll in crm processes for that what we will do is we will open our crm instance we'll go to the settings under that we will have the customization where we can open the processes and create a new process using this registered assembly or our custom workflow activity let's open the processes and create a new workflow 
may be a process to be termed in 2050. Still we are using the old entity classes. So what we'll do is we'll click on new button, enter ribbon and give a meaningful name to the process. Let's let's give it as custom workflow. Since this is our sample and there are not much of workflows added there, we'll select category as workflow because we are going to create a new workflow here. Let it run in the background only because that is a recommended stuff. And also it, it will be asynchronous so that behind the scenes it will run. And uh, since we are creating a contact, we will register this thing along with the account entity so that from the account entity we can trigger this plugin so whatever we are giving in that entity from there only we will be going to trigger this plugin this is for our testing purpose what we'll do is uh, we will select or we'll run this as on demand process and we will uncheck all the other options to start with because we can we can start these things with uh, anytime whether it's on a create on a status change or or something is deleted whatever it is let's add a new step by selecting the custom workflow we'll give a name to the step whatever we have created and what what the step is going to do so the step is going to create a new contact for us with the name john smith this is actually a hard-coded value which is not a good practice but since this is for a sample let's go with it we have saved this if we go to the process session we can see there are no processor initiated now we need to trigger this oops it will not work we need to go back and we need to activate it first because we don't have any workflow which is in deactivated state to work work so first step is to activate it as it will be only in draft state nothing will trigger from there we'll go to accounts because our workflow is mapped to the account entity let's select one of the account we'll go to the ribbon there we will see run workflows we'll click on that we will get all the workflows listed to the account which needs to be run on demand basis there we go custom workflow which is added by us we will add it it will ask for a confirmation yes we are going to run this the next we will let's ignore this this is some some sample stuff now we will go to our process session. we can see a new session has been triggered and its status you can see in progress now it will be succeed and our workflow is completed successfully let's go and check it now we'll navigate to the contact and there we go the second record john smith which is created because of our workflow done with it now you understood right how easy it is to create a custom workflow activity hope you enjoyed it thank you you try yourself it's a bang